Hello everybody and welcome to the Film Review Central channel with me Kieran Brilliant. I hope that you're all well here to talk about more movies and TV and hope to make the conversation a little bit more interesting. Uh, we are here with one of the most highly anticipated uh, movie reviews of 2023 because it's one of my most highly anticipated movies because for the first time in my lifetime I went to the cinema to see Mr Ford play one of the most iconic characters in movie history. He's got his hat, he's got his whip, and he hopes that there's no snakes around. Here is a review for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So going into the movie, as I mentioned, I was really, really excited about this film, not only because I love the franchise, I love the genres uh, that these m movies represent, but also it's like, as mentioned in the intro, it's one of the most iconic characters of all time, and Mr. Ford is absolutely fantastic as him. Um, to me personally, there are such a difficult conversation. I remember having it with uh, my um, editor, Tom. Um, about which one is the most iconic, Indiana Jones or Han Solo. And for me, it's such a difficult you know, question to answer. Um, but this is the fifth movie in the franchise. It has been 15 years since the last movie, Kingdom and the Crystal School, which was universally hated. I am part of that group. And it is the first Indiana Jones movie to not be directed by Steven Spielberg. James Mangold comes into this in the director's chair. He's done movies like Logan and Ford vs. Ferrari, two movies that I think are really, really good. So I had no big issues with that. Uh, the trailers really interested me. I fall in love with it. Uh, like it was bringing back the style and the themes and the elements of Raiders of the Lost Ark and Temple of Doom, which is easily top two Indiana Jones movies for me, and that's not changed. Um, so for me personally, I was really looking forward to going into the, watching this movie, seeing him back on screen, hearing the music in the cinema. You know, I wasn't alive when the first movie came out, but it's it's absolutely massive, and it's really great to see him back on screen. So. Walking out of the movie and having a few um, days to really, really think about this movie. Leaving the cinema, I had my doubts. Then looking at this behind the scenes stuff, um, being told about a few things in terms of the story, I, I like it a lot more. And I think it's a very, very solid Indiana Jones movie. I think what Harrison Ford really does is you know, bring that same energy and brings the same charisma and, and sort of personality, uh, you know, in this role, really brings this character into the forefront of, you know, the time. I like how Indiana Jones has now got older and they're more aware of that. I feel like that's been a massive negative for a lot of people, but for me, it makes sense. They're not hanging on. They're not trying to make it to are they, you know, he can still do it. Some sometimes you just really can't, and I think they play on that for comedic reasons and comedic sense. Um, but it makes sense and it works, and it has to work because Harrison Ford, you know, is is uh, getting old a bit. He's still in fantastic shape, Mister Ford, amazing. But um, I I really like the what the character brought in terms of this overall, just sort of innocence and you know, feel like he has to do this for himself and for his um, good friend that's played by Toby Jones in the movie, which is really cool to see him in this movie. And for me personally, you're um, looking at exactly how Indiana sort of interacts with all the characters. And, you know, he's always massively central in terms of the story. And I just think he played a really, really good version of Indiana Jones. He had the heroics, but he also was aware that actually this aging person trying to achieve something that his friend valiantly fought for his entire life. And I just think that the way he was written, his intentions and how the movie progressed with him still being Indiana Jones, the, the greatest archaeologist in movie history, I think that was a really, really cool thing. 
Um, let's talk a little bit about the new characters. Phoebe Waller-Bridge, for me, I thought was really great. She was on par with Harrison Ford in terms of film significance, uh, and in terms of the roles. And I just think she really had, you know, the comedic timing of somebody in that in that position. I think she was really, really well casted. I've really liked her in other stuff that I've watched. I think she has that sort of innocence, but yet is almost, you know, comedic and, and, and fun and light-hearted. Um, and I think her interactions as well and chemistry with Harrison Ford I thought was really great. I thought it brought out a different side of Indiana Jones. It, she was on par. She was used a lot for comedic reasons and stuff like that. All the comedy was sort of driven through her in the movie. Um, but I thought it was a, a really great casting. I, I absolutely enjoyed her in this movie. And, you know, we'll have to see what happens with that. I, I know... This shouldn't be something that we discuss on an Indiana Jones movie, but you almost sort of have to nowadays. Do you see a TV show with that? That's that's how I feel sometimes. Well, when you know leaving the cinema, you just go, could there potentially be a, an Indiana Jones project involving her in that world? Yes, there's always that possibility. Do I think they'll do it? I think if the money's there, and I think if the appeal's there, Disney Plus obviously utilising. Uh, that in terms of Lucasfilm, so I, I'm, I'm intrigued. I mean, I'm definitely intrigued. But I thought she was really great in this movie. If this is the last time we saw her, uh, Mads Milkinson plays the villain. He has been in some franchises, hasn't he? Bond, the MCU, uh, Star Wars, and he always seems to be playing the villain in these movies. And he is the villain in this one again. He plays a Nazi scientist. It's one of them where I just think. If you want a villain in your movie, Mads Mikkelsen is available. Absolutely perfect casting. But I feel like watching a lot of his movies, I don't feel like I, can, I see him anywhere else now or any other role. I don't see him playing a hero or an anti-villain. But for me, he was all right. He he didn't do much wrong. He didn't sort of put uh, a step wrong. And for me, I, I, I feel like the, the typecasting that which he has probably restricts him. The way that the Indiana Jones movies are written with always the villain seem to be in the right place at the right time, sort of restricted his intentions. You do feel like they are very minimal, very stereotypical. But I thought he played a really... I thought he was fine. There was not really much to sort of talk about it with. Um, and that's sort of a general feel about how you know he is as a, as a villain. For me, I feel, I feel like he's been much better in like other villainous movies, like James Bond and Casino Royale. That character was really flushed out. We learned a lot about his backstory. For this, it's just, you know why he wants to find it. You know exactly why, you know, he's going to be against Indiana. And for me, that whilst it's quite stereotypical for just having a restricted villain, you always sort of feel like you have to sort of go, okay, you're all right, but you didn't really blow me away. Um, the One of the bits that really interested me was... In the, and you see in the trailer, and this is a non-spoiler review, as you can probably tell from the thumbnail, I usually do put spoilers on the thumbnails, um, but you see a de-aged Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, in the trailer, and that is where this movie begins. It goes back in time to the um, sort of the end of World, of, uh, World War II, um, in, the, in the 40s. This movie is set placed in the 60s, uh, just after they um, sent the men on the moon and that's sort of what this movie um does revolve around particularly Matt Wilkinson's character um but there's a de-aging moment in the movie that looked a bit choppy there was I watched it with my dad and I remember watching it and we just my dad sort of looked at me and went that looked very CGI and um you know it was a great action scene it was around about 15 to 20 minutes long and it was a really great start for it but it definitely felt very cgi based i'm trying to make a comparison to between this action scene and the one in the last crusade right at the end right at the end when they go through the desert and even in the kingdom of the crystal skull as well when they go through the jungle these movies love they love chase scenes in these movies but for me they seem very much more practical that because of obviously the the CGI, I understand, but I think it was a little bit choppy. You could really see it. I think when he was running, running over the trains, um, the lips as well, the the dialogue was a little bit muffled as well, and not really in sync. So for me, that is a really big negative. Even though it was a really great start, a really great action scene to start off your movie, I just think that they could have really worked on that, and it was very, very noticeable in the film. 
Moving briefly on then to sort of the, the negatives and the frustrations. This movie, I mean, I've done two movie reviews whilst I've been home and whilst I've been in the sort of the summer movie season. Um, and both of these movies has contained a scene or has contained a moment in it where it really, really frustrates me. <laughs> you know, it, it, there was, the, and with The Flash, it was the. Um, spoilers for the flash by the way if you're watching this review and you've not seen the flash one um but george clooney obviously showing up that was a real big sort of like oh really this one sort of really is what probably one of the most annoying um movie scenes is when they're in the car they're in a car chase and there's a specific character in the movie i won't reveal exactly why he's there but throughout the whole chase scene First of all, he shouldn't be in the chase scene. There was no need for him to be in the chase scene. It was a bit unnecessary. But there was a moment where he he continuously just says Phoebe Waller Bridge's name throughout the whole act, throughout the whole action sequence. That's all he says. He just turns around and and just shouts the name, and then you like, and nobody listens. She doesn't even look at him, and then he shouts it again, and and then he's off screen for a bit, and he comes in at the last moment, shouts her name. I was just like, can we please just kill this character off? Can we please just get this over and done with? But I'm not going to reveal exactly what happened to him. I don't want to spoil that. But that was probably one of the most annoying movie scenes of this year. I'm saying that even now. And I watched the Super Mario movie. I'm joking. Super Mario movie was really, really good. Um, Check out my review alongside good friend Lord of Shadows, uh, which will be... um, in the community tab, by the way, just a short little plug there for Lord of Shadows, my good friend, uh, on his channel. Um, but that, but yeah, back to the the uh, conversation at hand. That was probably one of the most annoying movie see, movie scenes this year. I would definitely say if you want to see a ranking of that, I'll do it at the end of the year, and that one's going to definitely be on there. Um, another negative, bit, and I didn't particularly like the ending. Uh, I, I did think it landed massively on the fantasy elements. Um, I, I like it a little bit more now, a couple of days after I've watched it and sort of speaking to people and reading some other stuff um, about it. I thought it was clever, but do I think it pushed the fantasy boundaries? Absolutely. And I think that that was massively put in place because of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And I think it's, it, it tries to match that in this one. Does it work? I think it pushes it a little bit too much. And I wasn't a massive fan of that. But for me personally... I, I like the ending more when you research it, but straight out of the cinema, I said in my out cinema review, I wasn't a big fan of it. I feel like a couple of days um, before recording, I feel like I understand it a little bit more. Um, and I think the ending does drag. I think the ending does drag. It was two hours and 20 minutes, this movie was. Uh, it felt longer. It did feel longer. I felt like it did drag. I felt like we weren't really getting to the main sort of, you know, sort of conflict, and it does end quite abrupt. So you have this really long, drawn out final act, and then it abruptly stops. It has a nice moment at the end, and um, you know that was really great to see. But for me, I just think that it was went. Oh, okay, we're done now. You know, but you dragged that all on. You know, so I think it could have been a lot tighter. It could have been a lot more condensed. Um, out of ten, score out of ten. I'm going to give this a solid six. A solid six. Uh, And I do think that that might come across as harsh because I have spoken about a lot of really great positives. But in comparison to some of the sevens I've watched this year, I do think that this movie particularly does uh, struggle in that final act, the the pacing of it. And I do think that, you know, whilst it was really, really great to see Indiana Jones back on screen, if I'm looking at these earlier stuff, you'd probably put it... Fourth out of the five in the other ones, I think you've got to go for the three. The first three has probably been um, you know, in that order of release, which is what, one, two, and three. Um, and then but it was most definitely better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I can't lie. So uh, for me, a six out of ten does seem a very solid one in comparison to the movies I already watched this year and the Indiana Jones franchise. So that is it for my review of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Let me know what you think about the movie uh, via the comment section. But please do keep it spoiler-free because this is a spoiler-free review. But if you want to talk about it with me on my uh, Instagram, drop me a, a DM and we will be discussing about Indiana Jones or pretty much anything you want to talk about in movies and TV. I am all open to that. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe so you never miss any of the uploads. And I hope you've been enjoying all of the content and I'm massively thankful to each and every one of you that clicks on my content. 
That is it enough for today's review. I've hoped to make the conversation sound a little bit more interesting. See you in a bit.